All right, welcome back, everyone. We are talking about birds this morning, and uh, not just about you know bird populations and habitats, but also things that we can be doing better to help protect them and to give them a good, solid life here in the Upper Peninsula. So you have um, seven or eight ways and things that we can be doing maybe a little bit better. Let's uh, put that information up on the screen. Let's get started. Let's talk about number one, which is, there it is, break up window reflections. Yeah, so I'll bring this little product um, out. So basically birds don't see glass like we do. Mm -hmm. They see the reflection of the sky. So um, if you have trees up against a window, um, they're seeing, and, and you know, you could see the reflection of the sky, they're gonna just cruise right into it. Especially we have a lot of birds right now that are migrating through, right? So mm -hmm. they're not used to this area. It's not like our birds that are here all year round, which it can still happen to them, but it's more of an issue with migrating birds. So you need to break up the reflection. There's a bunch of ways to do it. This is one product that's really cool. It's called Kaleidoscape. So basically it's, it's a tape that you put up and it can be removed and you have to do the outside of the window. Okay. Um, so to break it up. And so this has really tiny holes in it that let some light in and it's not really like a big deal like you can still mm -hmm. see out but it breaks up the reflection for the birds so this is one product there are a bunch of others you can even use like tempura paint like just oh. little dots or a beautiful oh, cool. design yeah and that can come off I've you know, seen that, like um almost like clear decals but they're almost like matte yeah, yeah. so they and do have decals too yeah yeah the big thing is it's got to be numerous so they used okay. to say just put a hawk uh, silhouette that doesn't do it. Enough. Okay, you have to have numerous. They're saying two to four inches to really cover because hummingbirds, you know, they need a tiny little. If they see there's a patch to go through and that's oh, not wow. covered, yeah, they'll go. They'll still hit it. Okay, so we're not going to get all. We're not going to eliminate all of them, but we can greatly reduce. Um, I have the ones on my house that are. We have like the little window. Um, I don't remember what they're called, but like the hash. Yeah, whatever. Div yeah. dividing oh, yeah. the panes yeah. so they can see that. So then I have the UV um, ones that are beautiful. They're actually like an art artist like sure. design on the outside to break that up. Yeah, and it's great. You can still see out. Yeah, you can still see out because yeah. you get used yeah. to it. But yeah. that really helps. And that's it's, they say a billion uh, plus birds are killed by wow. hitting windows wow. um, in buildings a year. So it is a big big deal and so you know and sometimes maybe some of the windows in your house aren't you know they're in the shade no. or whatever exactly. but you have a big picture window yes. and if you notice one then yes yeah get it I say if it's happened a few you know a couple more than once you want to treat that window okay mm -hmm. all right well let's move on to number two we got to keep moving here this yeah. morning keep cats indoors or mm -hmm. in enclosed uh, areas yeah. this is a big one again a billion birds a year are killed and and folks just don't realize your our outdoor domestic cats are not a wild animal mm -hmm. so they shouldn't be outside um, it's dangerous to them they can get hit by car I've been a vet tech for 30 plus mm -hmm. years I've seen oh, horrible yeah. injuries to cats disease um, it's not good for the cats and it's terrible for the birds the cats have a nasty bacteria that for like a little 10 or 12 gram tiny bird mm -hmm. um, are just devastating even mm -hmm. if I clean out the wound right away get them on the antibiotics they usually don't survive so um, it's really important and then you know when the babies are around and a cat kills a parent then all those babies die yeah. so it really is it's huge um, and there are there's really cool catios these days that yeah, are like an I've outdoor screened in <laughs> yeah, spot yeah. for the cats um, some cats if you start them young they will walk on a leash I mean that's not easy <laughs> you know but we ask folks maybe not this cat but your future cats you mm -hmm. know really consider because it's a huge will make a huge impact yeah all right something definitely to think about and then going back to the list let's skip number three because we're gonna be talking about that extensively this morning plant, plant native yes. so we're, we're we'll get to that in a moment yes. um, don't use pesticides yeah, that's super important. We've heard more and more about that. Yep. Yeah, and so the birds, um, yep, they're feeding 80% of land birds. Songbirds mm -hmm. are feeding insects to their babies. So if you spray your lawn for insects, those those insects are poisoned, and they're going to poison them. We had I had a clutch of Phoebes, which is a cute little insectivore, a couple years ago. Folks had sprayed. They saw they had a nest up in their eaves. Were watching it. Then one day, mom didn't move for several hours. Mm -hmm. oh, it killed Aww. killed her. Aww. Luckily, she hadn't fed the babies yet, so I was able to raise and release those guys. Oh, but yeah, you don't realize that, but it really makes a big impact. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right, and then uh, slow down on the road. If you see a bird on the road, yes. if you see some something going on, yeah, don't, don't assume they're going to take off. I yeah, mean, don't assume that they can just take off. Sure. Right? Yep, yeah, because it happens a lot. Yeah. Right. 
And then this is a big one, use non-lead ammunition and tackle. Yes, yeah, so this is something a lot of folks don't think about. I've got some more little um, we love props. props here, yes. <laughs> so um, you can see this is um, copper and this is mm -hmm. lead. So you can see lead, uh, you know, basically breaks into a ton of little pieces and it's just a tiny segment like that that could kill um, a bird, like an eagle. So what happens is um, hunters are shooting deer and they're leaving the gut piles out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the eagles come, they're scavengers and other birds, even chickadees, crows, ravens, jays, come and feed on that and then it kills them. It's a slow mm -hmm. and painful death. It really mm -hmm. is awful. And a lot of times we don't get to them in time. And if we do get to them, it's a real, it takes a long time to get the lead out of their system. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, copper doesn't uh, break up in big pieces and it's also not toxic to them. Oh. So um, the other animals that are affected are our water birds. So trumpeter, swans, loons, um, geese. So they're dabblers, right? So they're mm -hmm. along the water. So they'll grab little pieces of lead, like sinkers mm -hmm. from fishing or mm -hmm. loons will grab um, a fish that's got a sinker already in it or they grab the whole fish mm -hmm. and the sinker. And again, it's uh, devastating and preventable. So sure. it is, it's something over time, it is a little more expensive, but um, you know, I think it's, it's a valuable, you know, change to make to help these guys. I feel like we're hearing more and more about this. Yeah, we're and trying. Are you yeah. seeing less lead in birds or is it yeah. not? We don't see a ton here because we're in such a rural area. Yeah. So I did have one a couple years ago, a, a loon that did, we send them to, for testing. It did come back um, with high lead. Beth, who does the raptor, she sees a lot more of it. Um, almost every raptor, I think she had said, last season or the last couple years has some level of lead. Wow. Even wow. babies. Wow. wow. So well, and you think sad. about it too, I mean, even though maybe the messaging is getting better, mm -hmm. all of that, it's still out there yeah. from previous years. Like, it's not like it just goes away right. because we switch. So we need to yeah. continue to be proactive at this and Yeah, clean it really it up. does help. It's a simple, I mean, we know lead is obviously toxic to us. So yeah. um, we need to not leave it in the environment. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at the last two here before we go to a break. Forgive me, I can't remember what they are. Okay, use caution when cutting trees and keep your feeders clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the feeders um, are a big thing. So I really, maybe not pop popular opinion, but I really don't think folks need to feed birds in the, in the spring and summer mm. here. It's not necessary. We have such a lush uh, area. Uh, Michelle from UP uh, Native Plants will tell you about all the amazing food, natural food we have for them. Yeah. We need to offer some food in the winter when it's real harsh, because it yeah. is hard for them to find birth, or find seed, but um, you do need to keep them clean. So I suggest folks have metal and plastic feeders that they can soak in a dilute bleach, bleach solution let them air dry, rinse them. Um, if you see sick birds around your feeders, put them away for several weeks. Um, there's a lot of, feeders basically bring the birds in and that they, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of communicable diseases. Um, it also give, brings them closer to our windows that they hit. The cats, oh, okay. it's easier for cats to get them. Sure. Yep. So there's a lot of reasons why it's better to just focus on providing natural food, okay. especially in the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the, the trees are a big thing, the, the dead trees, especially we have cavity nesters. So all kinds of birds, chickadees and sure. wood ducks and mergansers and the list goes on and on that use these little holes and dead trees to have their babies. So a lot of folks are just cutting them down and they're yeah. cutting them down during breeding season. Certainly sometimes it's not safe to have a tree around. Sure. I understand that, but um, do it, you know, before <laughs> the babies come because um, you don't realize they're trying to evade predators. So they're trying yeah. to get in and out on the fly, you know, yeah. so nobody sees them. So unless you're a real skilled birder, you, you're not going to see the nesting activity. Okay. When so, is yeah. breeding season for most We're birds? starting now. now. Yep. So I would say May through, um, yeah, May through August really okay. is the big, big time. I mean, it'll get really going in June, but yeah, we start getting getting going in May. Okay, all right. Well, so much to think about. Yeah. I mean, gosh, some of those things. Yeah, we have learned a lot, and we're just getting started. We have to take another break, but I um, want to learn a little bit about your funding and just the ways that you raise money in the community a little bit more. Um, and then we will be talking about plants and ways that you can attract birds and, and help birds um, at the same time. So we'll be right back.